Coogan Cassius, IFL TV, Tony Bellew. Tony, yeah. surely the scorecards were a little wide there on that. I had Callum by two or three, Coogan, I'm not going to lie. But John Ryder put in the display of a lifetime. He's pushed the best super middleweight in the world all the way. He's gave the best super middleweight in the world his hardest fight today. So I think the, the, the winner was correct in Callum Smith. And down, I had Callum Smith winning. But at the same time, just because a man does better than you think he should have done, or did you think he, he did do, doesn't mean he's won the fight. Mm. You know, like I said, this goes on, it's gone on through decades of boxing because one man does better than everyone thinks he's going to do. It doesn't necessarily mean he's won, it just means he done better than was expected. So, tonight, John Rad is an unlucky loser, but it is what it is. He'll come back again. He's shown he's amongst the big boys in the super middleweight division. A word on uh, Glover, obviously, it's heartbroken. Yeah, I'm absolutely heartbroken. Uh, there's not much I can say. It's a horrible sport, it can be a horrible business at times. But, you know, I've tried my very best to give Craig every opportunity possible. Uh, Dylan Smith was just a better man tonight. Mm. Craig didn't switch on to certain moments and times in the fight and it got really hard, uh, much quicker than we had anticipated. So, you know, I don't know, I'll just see what the future holds. Uh, you know, to go for Liverpool, Callum Smith won that massive and made up. Put a smile on his face at the end. Uh, and Thomas Whittaker hard gets a stop as went again against the guy who never gets stopped. Uh, and on 40 seconds notice to go, he comes out and he gets the job done. So I'm happy. Tom Smith's an art's great. Tom Smith's one. I'm just a bit heartbroken with Craig because I know how, how Craig lives the game. He, you know, he lives and breathes boxing. He's given everything to this camp. So it's just hard and it's hard to take. Um, Wilder and Ortiz is in the early hours of yeah. tonight, uh, or in the morning rather, and then all attention on Saudi Arabia next week. Yes. Uh, well, in a couple of weeks rather. Yeah. What's your thought process behind Saudi Arabia at the moment with Joshua? How are you kind of, you're seeing it currently? Good on them. Good on them. No, but how do you see the fight kind of playing out? He wins. He wins the rematch. AJ. I just think he does it. And, he, and I think he does it in fantastic fashion. I think he'll look cool, calm. He knows what he's going into this time. He knows what, what he's up against. This is nothing new now. This is, you know, he knows what he's got to do and I think he'll get the job done. Wilder made some comments this week during the Yulti's fight week that he always does. He, he doesn't believe that Joshua really wants that fight. Of course, of course going to say things like that, but you don't fight the people he fights and not really want to fight. Listen, he's been consistently calling out the world champions since he turned professional. How can Anthony Joshua not want fights against world champions? Let's remember, he was facing world champions in his 16th fight. He became unified champion in what, his 17th, 18th fight? So who's, who's out there? I mean, who's beaten more champions? Deontay Wilder or Anthony Joshua? Just a quick, just a quick, quick question. Yeah. I mean, who's got the better resume? Well, you would say question. Joshua. You would say Joshua. It, 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 it's, not, it's not even up for debate. It's not even up for debate. So it, it's insane to suggest that this man doesn't want to face the best when all as he's done his whole career. And let's bear in mind, this guy was selling at Wembley Arena against taxi drivers. So, you know, this kid just sells out phenomenally well. It's not like he needed to jump the jump ahead of space and, uh, and fight absolutely everyone. He faces everyone and anyone. In my mind, he wins this, he goes back to where he belongs, at the top of the heavyweight division. It's just a minor blip. When Lennox Lewis lost to Hassim Rachman, was he, def was, was, he, was he all of a sudden labelled terrible or was he not the best heavyweight in the world? It's just that heavyweights have blips. Anthony Joshua, I'm not saying he's Lennox Lewis because he's not and he's never going to be. But what I'm saying is, is when the heavyweight champion of the world loses and then comes back and gets it back straight away, it's obvious it's just a minor blip. He's got the chance to put that right on December the 7th in Saudi Arabia. What do you think of his physique at the moment? Looks like he's trimmed down a lot. Mate, I don't really pay much attention to his physique. All as I know, it's amazing. So, I could only dream of having one. Uh, so, it is what it is, mate. He's just, he's a he is the best athlete in the heavyweight division in the last 20 years. But people will say, well, why does he get tired? He does get tired, because sometimes he doesn't relax when he fights. Mm. When he relaxes when he fights, he does 12 rounds easy. You can just watch him against Joseph Parker. But if he wants to get into a slugging match and tense up and, and be stiff, he ain't going to last 12 rounds. He's not going to last four. The fittest man in the world, if he stiffens and tenses up, is not going to last more than four rounds. And you expect Wilder to come through tonight? Okay. Go on. Thank you. You, you expect Wilder to come through tonight against Ortiz? 
Uh, Ortiz is a good fighter, but he's 105 years old. So, Rocky Marciano's 105 years old with Joe Lou beating him. <laughs> Joe Lou was 105 years old when Rocky Marciano beat him. Uh, that's what comes to mind when I say that. Luis Ortiz looks in phenomenal shape. Yeah. He's a really good fighter. But uh, I can't quite explain how he looks in better shape now. Is it, is it a year or two years on since the first fight? He looks in better shape now than he did for the first fight. I don't get it, but you know. Just the final one. Medicine's a fantastic thing. Sorry, I know you I know you want to go. You've got to go. Yeah, I need to see me fight, I mean. Um talk about Chizora fighting your old opponent. I don't manage them, so I don't make the decisions. If I did, I don't let these things happen because they want to see me meeting. It's such a grueling war, but I don't know that. Uh, don't pump the monster meat, but then Del Boy's got the monster in him too. So I'm always there for Del. I love Del. He's my brother, and he always will be, and I'll always back him no matter what the odds are against him. So I will always back him, and I will always be. But there if he was him, you wouldn't fight him. That's not what you asked me, Cougar. You laid the question me. What no, but I'm just taking, me, picking the bones out what you're saying. You're, you're not saying... picking the bones out of what I'm saying. That's not what I said, Coogan. All right. I said I'm not his manager. Didn't say nothing Would about Would you advise him if he was his manager not to fight him then? I'm not his manager. I can't answer that question, Coogan. <laughs> Listen, he's my All brother. Right. And I, well, as I've said before, I will always back him. I love him. But, uh, you know, boxing does not favour the old or the ageing. And it doesn't welcome anyone who overstays the welcome as has been proven with me. <laughs> Tony Belly, thank you very much for all the time. Always a pleasure, Coops. Keep watching. Top man. I have to be. Thank you.